Hello boys and welcome back to Calm Down Level Up. Today we are here again in uh, Democrats vs. Republicans. Thanks for all the support on the previous video by the way, it did really well. Today it's a little bit different because we actually have the 2008 election map versus the 2016 election map. So that gives a lot more strength to the Democrats because they have all of those Rust Belt states under their control. They have North Carolina, they have Florida, which adds a whole nother front for the Republicans to have to apply troops to. And then we're adding a third party here, Canada, which is at war with both sides. So Canada can sort of pick and choose who it wants to fight. And that also sort of evens it out a little bit more, I think, because Canada seems like it's more of a threat for the Democrats. Most of Canada's troops are in Quebec and Ontario. And they are right on the front of the um, some of those big Democratic states up in the Northeast as well. So Canada is going to be a threat to Michigan, New York, New England, all that that whole area. So it might even it out a little bit, give the Republicans a little bit of a chance. I did live stream this before. If you guys were there for the live stream, you know what might happen here, but you never know every game's different. Also, make sure you comment in the chat that you were in the live stream. I'll give you a little heart or something. Also, really quick, big shout out to my patrons, Andrew, Blog and Fletcher, Bubby, Infinity some gamer magnus rodney and samuel bjornsson guys thanks for all the support i mean some of you guys have been here for a long time and i really appreciate it infinitum gamer has been one for 14 months it looks like now which is insane thanks buddy really appreciate you man and i'm glad i could get you the 3k it's me infinitum here and i gotta say calm down level up <laughs> both rodney and samuel bjornsson have been here for eight months so that's incredible thanks guys and if you guys would like to join them and support the content that you like make sure to go check out the patreon link in the description below all right boys without further ado let's let's analyze this battle really quick before we get started now the thing is that the republicans are really, really going to struggle with is there are so many fronts and they have less states they have less powerful states so they are down in division count and they have more fronts to put troops on so as you can see they have this mega western front which is going to be hard to deal with because california starts off with quite a few divisions they have the new mexico and colorado front which they'll probably win because texas is right here they can come knock them out but still that's going to take away resources from probably the more important fronts we have the big eastern one that has all the rust belt states the northeast virginia and north carolina very powerful area right there even in the 2016 one even though the republicans were able to take the northeast it still was a it was a battle and it took a while for it to happen and then of course adding florida a whole nother front that the republicans are gonna have to divide attention to they'll probably again they'll probably win they'll probably capitulate florida but it's just gonna take away all those resources and then of course they have Canada that they're gonna have to deal with and the Canadians are going to come south so even though they will probably be a bigger threat to the Democrats here let's actually view as them really quick so you can see their invasion force here getting ready to invade the Democrats there's still gonna be a minor threat in the north up until let's say the Republicans and Canadians defeat the Democrats they'll be a lot bigger of a threat after the Democrats are defeated if that happens and then of course Alaska I guess they have two divisions so I didn't think Alaska started with two I thought they only had one but there is this Canadian front over here as well that I guess they'll probably do good they'll probably take out Yukon they'll probably do some damage to BC We'll have to see what happens. Now to show off the Democrats really quick, you can see a lot of power in the Northeast, a lot of power in the Rust Belt, and quite a bit of power over here in the West Coast as well. And without further ado, let's get this rolling. I am in observer mode, and I have to turn the AI back on. There we go. Press play. And now we watch as the world collapses. Oh, that's right. We gave Guam to the Republicans because it's a mil because there's a big military base there. So action in West Virginia, instantly action in Kentucky and South Carolina. There's action. The Canadians are invading the Northeast, but also the Northeast is invading Canada. So this, if anything, the Canadians are actually helping the Republicans because they're taking Democratic divisions off the big Eastern front that the Republicans have to deal with. Wow, this is getting messy quick. I'm actually going to observe as... I'll, I'll observe as Pam, Panama because I don't think they're actually in this war. So we don't see all the front lines and stuff. So this is bad right here. Arizona capitulated to the Democrats. That means that these Colorado and New Mexico are definitely a lot safer. They're not encircled. So they have a stream of support coming through to actually help them. Now, are the Republicans doing good anywhere? I... 
I wouldn't say so. They've lost, pretty much lost South Carolina. They've lost West Virginia. They're about to lose, okay, they've lost Tennessee and they're about to lose Kentucky. And it also looks like the Canadians have lost Ontario. So the Canadians have effectively split in two. Also, the Canadians took Montana. And Canadians and Democrats are both invading North Carolina, except it looks like North Carolina just was entirely taken by Canada. Also, Florida was just saved because Georgia just capitulated. So rest in peace, Georgia. It looks like Texas is going to be the last stand for the Republicans. We're going to have the Alamo. Too. So, Democratic victory almost assured at this point, except it does look like the Republicans are winning in a certain area up here. They have capitulated Yukon. They are headed down south to attack BC as well, so that's pretty nice. Yes, Supreme Leader Obama is very pleased with their successes so far in 2008. McCain, pretty scared, but, uh, you know, he might be still a bit confident in his, in his defense, although Democrats have officially entered the borders of Texas in the west through uh, New Mexico. It looks like uh, Colorado actually capitulated so that's a technically a victory for the republicans it's keeping their stream of territory connected louisiana is the last stand out here in uh the south except it looks like there's pretty much no defenses in louisiana what happened to the entire army where are your defenses oklahoma just capitulated too quebec is gone to the democrats also nova scotia is gone new brunswick is gone prince edwards island is holding out as well as newfoundland so yeah very one-sided i didn't think it was going to be this one-sided <laughs> obviously geez in the 2016 map i think it was definitely a lot more balanced even though it it even wasn't very balanced. Oh, we're gonna have to find one that, that was more balanced. I, I'm gonna have to look at like maybe the 2000 election map with George Bush versus Al Gore. I think that one was pretty, a little bit more balanced. Cause I think the Democrats held a bit of the uh, the Rust Belt, but, but they didn't have all of it. It was more of an even share. Also look at that Illinois empire, geez. And then the uh, Socialist Republic of Minnesota is massive as well. But obviously these aren't gonna stay the way they are. We're gonna have to wait until uh, the official peace deal, which I might have to forcefully make happen if the entire country is take, if the entire of the uh, Republicans are taken except for like Guam and they'll never take Guam so I'm gonna have to I might have to do that manually but that's no problem Manitoba is now gone I think yes that was Manitoba Saskatchewan Alberta Columbia Nunavut and the Northern Commune all remain, except Columbia is being invaded by the Alaskans. Also look at the state of New York. It's New York, a bit of Ontario, and the entirety of Quebec, plus bits of Newfoundland, so it's growing. But boys, as you know, when this ends, that is not the end of the war. The real war comes when, uh, let's say the Democrats achieve, let's say the Democrats achieve full victory here. The faction's gonna break apart, and they're gonna have a lot of infighting and we're gonna have to see if the democrats can put the country back together like the republicans were able to if you guys watched the republican civil war infighting episode after the republicans actually took the country back over they had a massive civil war lots of mini factions formed but the republicans actually eventually put the country back together and and re-emitted all of the states almost all of the states back into the union which was pretty cool so we're gonna have to see if the democrats can do the same thing
All right, so this is what it looks like after that short time lapse. Um, all the democratic states controlling territory. And uh, as you can see, Minnesota is just a massive empire. Um, it's not going to be... Obviously, again, these are not going to be what they look like. New York, though. Illinois, Minnesota, and Washington State. <laughs> yeah, baby. Um, <laughs> hosting, like, just absolutely ridiculous amounts of territory so i think i am going to force actually i like the look of that main empire look at that that's pretty actually cool looking i think i am going to force the surrender of both canada and the republicans and we are going to see what happens right afterwards all right boys this is the result of the two peace deals canada and the republicans going into the democrats the reason it crashed is because well i think the reason it crashed is because i caused two peace deals at the exact same time so i think that crashed the game so i let one happen and then i let the other happen so this is what the world looks like washington my man uh did really good annexed like almost half of the landmass of canada and then of course the other huge one to uh not ignore illinois empire is almost half of the United States, so that's insane. Um, other ones to uh, recognize are uh, the Buckeye Imperium, so Ohio did pretty good. It annexed West Virginia, a lot of Kentucky, and actually a little bit of North Carolina. The main empire is pretty nice, except it doesn't have this state like it did when it was controlling territory. Also, the, <laughs> the Illinois Empire apparently controls... Um, wow. Apparently the Illinois Empire has some Anunavut, um, has Newfoundland. Did I miss anything else? Oh yeah, it has Alaska. Jeez. Also, a Apparently it owns Guam and anything else, not to my knowledge. Okay, but Northern Cascadia, so um, so actually Colombia has been exiled to this island over here. Um, looks like pretty big advantage to the fascists if uh, let's say Washington and Illinois work together, form a fascist faction. Maybe Florida would be admitted because it's also fascist. We've got Maine. They do control a lot of territory and they're still building their army though, so that might not happen. Or if it does happen, it might not survive. Let's press play and see how it breaks down. Also, as you can see, Canada was left. The Canada faction was actually left to continue in Yukon, so good for you. It immediately collapses. Oh, Illinois Empire rejoined. People are, are, they're all just rejoining after they left. That's interesting. Also, what is this? The Socialist Republic of North Carolina. Unless that's a different blue faction. Okay, it is. It's a different blue faction called the Confederation. And it is with the uh, Buckeye Imperium. So that is a good ally to get. This syndicate has formed by itself and another confederation has formed by itself. And what I suspected did happen. Oh, look at that war already. Cascadia teamed up with Illinois, so that is a very strong fascist faction, and of course Illinois is now going at w to war with the Socialist Republic of Indiana. They might join the syndicate, so that might bring California, Nevada, North Carolina into this. Buckeye Imperium also declared war on it, so rest in peace. So boys, this is going to be a different video. Thanks for watching. There will be a follow-up video to this, the massive democratic civil war. Thanks for watching, guys. If you like this video, make sure to hit like, favorite, and subscribe if you guys are new. Did New Jersey join Canada? No. That would have been awesome, though. <laughs> and I'll see you guys all next time. Peace.